Check out the shirt, everyone. He's got the data nerd. He's already fully indoctrinated. That's great. Integration is done. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I've given a bit of the context. So you can tell me, like, back in the early days when you started the company and how, how the inspiration came for all of this. Yeah, so Mike, my co-founder, and I had the pleasure of working at Flickr, which is well known for rapid deployment of software, and at Yahoo overall, which is large-scale infrastructure. And we just saw this gap in tools. As we were moving quickly, we had config issues that were taking down parts of the service. We were having performance issues. And we just we knew there had to be a better way. And we built some stuff ourselves, but you know, building it for one company isn't solving the problem for the industry. We, had, we wanted to go build it for everybody, basically, which is how we got going with Opsomatic. Sweet. Excellent. And it was just this different way of looking at production that I think no one else was looking at, yeah. right? It was, we, we've always felt like it's important to see CPU, memory, and disk. And that's what we do with our server's product. But I love how you come at it from a different Thanks. angle. Well, that NYSC outage you mentioned was a config issue. It had to do with the state of hosts. So it's absolutely the kind of stuff we're focused on. Wow, as a team. So that's that's huge, and that's an important way to look at production. So, um, and and tell me a bit about how you imagine this kind of coming in and and you know benefiting from being integrated with New Relic. Well, that's all secret stuff, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I mean, if you imagine like having you know application level visibility, browser level visibility, and being able to take that all the way down to the hosts that are running the core stack, and seeing that you know some config change in a cluster ended up affecting a customer experience. I mean, that, that end and end traversal is just amazing. So we, we are, we've been here for a week, <laughs> and the team's already hard at work on how we get that data integrated and do these kind of amazing traversals of, uh, of the insights to give you guys more visibility. And to think about the integration, look, old school acquisitions would talk about integration, and the PowerPoint would look beautiful. But how would the integration work? It would be two on-premise products that somehow need to somehow work together, right? Our integrations are going to be all entirely in the same software analytics platform, and all that data is going to be in NRDB. So our goal when we acquire companies, great companies like, like Opsmatic that have a great product, but we want, when it comes to all of you, when we're ready to ship it, we want us to feel identical to all the other New Relic products so that you can't tell what was built organically at New Relic or what came through a great acquisition like Opsmatic. So that's the work we're going to do. And I agree with you. I feel like these two pieces of sources of data are incredibly valuable together, far more than they are apart. So the best way to show it is why don't you give an example of Opsmatic and how it runs today? Sure. Oh, Lou, you're logged out. I need your password. <laughs> ABC123. <laughs> Let's get you. Thank you, sir. You are good to go. Awesome. So, you know, with us, it's, with Opsmatic, it's all about what's going on with your hosts. So what you're seeing here is basically a heat map of all the changes that have occurred across a piece of infrastructure. Um, and obviously, some's blue, which is good news. Some is red, which is not necessarily so good news. So, you know, classic issue, we've got a cluster that's underperforming. We've got latency occurring. Customers are unhappy. You know, what do you do? Uh, in our case, you can see immediately an alert with an Opsmatic that's been integrated into our data pipeline. And instead of kind of going to dig into this log and doing greps and all, sort of, all those other kind of things, you can literally go in and say, OK, well, what happened recently? Like, what happened in the last few minutes? We can drop down and say, OK, it looks like automation ran. Chef did its thing. Looks like, oh, some packages got modified. That could be the source. Um, yeah, that's a package change we didn't want. Now let's go see who did that. We've literally got the user log into that host that triggered that solo run of Chef, that changed that package, that messed up cluster performance, that made the customer unhappy. Uh, in New York City. So in seconds, we've put together the, the pieces that led to that performance issue or that outage without having to kind of dig through tons of logs. It's all right there in front of us. So we're all about kind of uh, situational awareness of what's changing and showing those, that change history and making it available to you so you can quickly get to the bottom of an issue that's, that's causing you trouble. So that's, that's kind of one element of the, of the, of the service. Um, the other piece is not just the change history, but what's going on with live state. Uh, as I was traversing there, I noticed that there was actually a, a piece of drift that occurred in that cluster as well. Something changed in the cluster, which should normally be an identical set of hosts. And this is actually an inventory view uh, that with, that's also with an Opsomatic. And I'm seeing all these different kind of variations across the host. Some of those I expect. I expect CollectD to be set up differently on each host. But what I don't expect is this kernel level setting, Somax Con, to be different, because this, is, this affects the level of connections between each of the uh, hosts in the cluster. Um, somebody's gone in and tweaked that. Probably at 2 AM in the morning, you know, the, the site's having an issue. Let me go in and manually change a few values and see if that'll improve the situation. The problem is that's a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. 
Um, with Opsmatic, you can see where that change event occurred, and you can literally see it in live state as well and see what's going on with that host. So we've got two hosts with a 128 value, two hosts with a 256 value. The correct value is 256, actually. So what I'm going to actually do is set up an assertion with an Opsmatic that lets me peg that value um, to always be 256. So once I set up that assertion, it's like a little unit test for that piece of my infrastructure. And if I go over into an assertions view, as, as a point of fact, that assertion is failing. So when that fails, I'm going to get alerted. So I've now got a policy check on the configuration set in place. So if somebody comes in at 2 in the morning again, I can immediately see when that change is made and avoid the issue with the cluster getting out of balance and having production issues that affect customers. So that's just a quick, you know, quick look. There's a lot more on the product, but I wanted to share a few pieces of it today. Uh, as Lou said, this data is incredibly valuable when paired with APM browser mobile data to kind of get to the answers really quickly. Awesome job. Jim, welcome to New Relic. It's so exciting to have you as part Thank of this. Thank you. Team. Thank you.